actually there's this piece, um, I'm not sure who the composer is, but it's called Black Dog. So the, the piece starts off with that already. We, I mean, we start off with a low note. Uh, uh, I'm, go, I'm playing wrong notes, but this is generally the idea. <laughs> Then I after that's the it's also yeah so it does in fact and actually I did write for um my for one piece where I did cause I thought it'd be cool to for the audience to hear that he's playing the same note but why is there a change? It's I guess for this effect if you want to pull it off it's it's more for it should not be fast because if it's fast you can't notice it so written E concert D. So there's a fingering and is there you could you do it with your 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 embouchure and uh the thing about clarinet is that when we bend we do not know how much we're bending and uh, many a times we bend too too far we bend past the the desired place so whenever possible if you need quarter tones um find find a good fingering that f uh, for it if not uh we can do quarter tone bends, so it's like... But, you know, like, I went that low, I could... It's almost a semitone, which is too far. And to use this bend, it's a little hard to find, you know... Mm. Oh, I hit the middle, you know. You, you, you know, especially in the high register, if you do a ambusher bend, people might mistake it for a, a, a bend down, you know, like... It, you just, it, I, I don't think it is very effective to use this. Okay. Is it try to? Um, but we can, uh, if you can't really find a good fingering that, if it's anywhere on the holes, what we can do is we can half hold it. Oh, half hold the. I see. So just a little if you want to go. From a, let's say this written D to a D quarter tone sharp thing. Wow, well, cool. Nice. Um, yeah, nice. This is also like the, you know, it, it's it's kind of glissing, but yeah. stopping before you actually gliss. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, pitch bending, like glissando. Mm, yeah. So of course the most famous is the Gershwin. <laughs> is that purely fingers or it also in? It's a mix of fingers and embouchure for that. Um, actually, for me, it depends on which ever the player is most comfortable with. Like for me, I do not use fingers at all. It's complete embouchure. Three, I just. complete this. I just do a chromatic scale up. And I'm not even like, you know. I find that this is, I mean, this is possible to do and there are people who can do it fantastically, but it's hard for me to control. If if I only use this, you know, the moment I hit the this note, it's, it's a note where most clients start bending. I'll get this effect. I'll just show it. And then we we stuck we we remain stuck with that note for a while. So it's like oh, oh I see I see. But I what I like is like the almost the audience almost can't tell where does it start. The, but it's it's just preference. Mm, I I did watch some videos, however, where people con use both. So it is also possible and. That also sounded well, like you know. I I don't even need to. Yeah, this I I can't control it. Yeah, the finger appears to be less uh smooth. Yeah, because and it's for for especially for covering, right? If yeah, for, especially for covering. The reason being because the moment you see these keys, these keys are up when your fingers are up and when you go down these keys immediately this whole set of keys immediately goes down 
Yeah. You know, so so the audience would hear it before you actually So it's easier to release than to cover up. Uh it's yeah. easier to release than to cover up. Yeah, provided you are doing the sliding technique. Okay. Yeah. I but see. With, with the armor shirt, I can control any direction I want. Right? There are klezmer videos that are really good when they apply this laughing effect. And it's not just, you know, laughing, it's not just an effect, but it's also mixed with, um, it's also very virtuosic. Basically what they're doing is a combination of bends and um, sound stopping and uh, manipulation of the embouchure here. So basically what they're doing, they're doing like, yeah, first, first the bend happens and no, it's only embouchure bend. I see. It's like, but right at the end, they just let let it go. So. Wow, nice. Other trumpet technique that I kind of stole. It's like a horse, a neighing effect. Have you heard? Like, wow. You're shaking that instrument. It's in and out, in and out of my mouth. So it's like, wow. Do you, do you check, wait, is one note? Do you hold the same fingering or? Um, actually, I should have changed the notes. <laughs> then you really get a like a oh, horse I see. So I normally start on a written key, <laughs> and then I go down to a G. That's normally the most effective. And I think anything longer than that, you know, horse don't nays for so long. So yeah. let's, let's talk about the double tonguing first. Okay. On the clarinet, it is not really advisable to write double tonguing passages because uh, one, the mouthpiece is inside the mouth. So with this inside the mouth, there's a really restriction. It's very difficult. Um, but my single tonguing is slow. So I went to learn double tongue. So low notes, of course, easier. A lot easier. Low, low notes easier? Yes, okay. the low notes is the easiest, in fact. If you want to start, definitely start on low notes. Once we hit the first break, which is the once we hit the register key, it gets a little difficult. So I'll just show you what I can do. So it's like so um, already this is very difficult, and most people they can't get past. You know they'll they'll stumble here okay. as if like they're a car that keeps stalling. So. Um, I think I can go up to C, the written C. But even then, you can hear the quality is not as you know, not as clear as like a low note. Yeah. Start to lose it here, and then here it's almost break. It's a breaking point. Okay, okay. But most clarinetists don't really learn double tonguing. Okay, how yeah. fast, if it's single tonguing, how fast do you think it will be? Uh, okay, a normal clarinetist uh, music student should be able to tongue semi quavers at one, uh, crotchet equals one, three, two. Okay, um, quarter notes equal one, uh, three. Quarter notes. Sorry, America, I forgot. Yeah, one, <laughs> uh, one, one, one thirty two. Yeah, one, one thirty two. Okay. Uh, about there, some even go up to one four, one forty four. Okay. Yeah, but like, and and I know people who can single tongue as fast as I can double tongue. So oh. then, yeah, it, it's it's crazy. Okay. Like, uh, but there are pieces where we um where it's really very difficult to single tongue because after a while we we stumble. You got uh, slap slap tongue. <laughs> you know, for the saxophone, there's yeah. open slap and close slap. Um, so is is that the case for okay. her? Yeah. Uh, slap tongue is my weakest. <laughs> Up till up till today, I still can't slap, but and I'm not sure of open or closed slap. But I can, I I do not know what what this is called. But I can do something that sounds like a slap design, and it's easier on bass clarinet, like because it's very resonant. The resonant and the mouthpiece and the reed is a lot bigger. So if it's bigger, it gives you more room to. Um, really experiment with the concept, the correct technique behind it. But like you know, if it's small, it's hard to get the suction right. Or but how it sounds like when you go up the register. Yeah, 
it, it kind of sounds more like uh, like uh, like I'm hitting wood like pa, 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 pa. So, okay. all air and also half air half sound. <laughs> Yeah. So I guess this it has um, to be a soft. Uh, yeah, dynamic. soft, soft. Yeah. If if it's not soft, you can't really hear. So. Like. Also, if you want to achieve this very easy, all you have to do is you just get a very hard beat. Or uh, uh, to make your read hard, you just push your read up by maybe, uh, two millimeters. So. Oh. When it's like here, it's really hard. You know. Can you do the lowest notes too? Oh, let's try. Very um, cool, very cool sound. Yeah, okay, it may seem cool to you, but let's say you are teaching uh, high school clarinets. Oh. This is the last thing you want to hear. It means that they, are, they, are, they, are, they have a bad sound. Okay, do all, all air. Uh, all if air. you do all air, right? At, at, at some point, you should repeat, right? Let's say you go up the keys. Oh, like at, at one point, you will okay. hear the same. Yeah, probably pass the register. I think. Really? Okay. Yeah. Oh no! Wow, it it's very subtle. Very. Yeah, it, it actually follows up the register, the 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 pitch wise. It does. If you let some air escape around the mouthpiece, is it is the air louder? No, yeah, I'm trying to. I'm saying the difference between releasing air at the yeah. mouth versus mm. oh, yes. having the air through the instrument yeah. making the air sound. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, yes, it's louder because it's my bad habit, <laughs> oh. and, and I always get scolded for like you know like. And then like Ralph, I can only hear the air. I want to hear the sound, but I mean, of course, if you want to do it in a you know a modern writing, you. Sure, it, it can be louder than the sound, right? Um, Wait, so you are letting a lot of air escape yeah, from I'm letting the... a lot of air escape. Wait, uh, what, what if you remove the mouthpiece? <laughs> oh, uh, I buzzed. Uh, so this, in this sense, when I go up the register, it, it goes back down, it repeats itself. No, it, it goes back to the lower pitch when I repeat. Okay, okay. Well, if mm -hmm. you just have the mouthpiece mm -hmm. and you blow air, how does it sound? Just through just the mouthpiece. Just air, just air. So it's... Can't it's, really do much variation. Yeah, I guess you could... Um, my suggestion is not to, because you never know when the reed will vibrate. Uh, accidents do happen. And if I'm not careful... I, in fact, if you... If you increase your volume, you would have heard that I actually squeaked a little on the mouthpiece while doing the demonstration just now, so... Yeah, okay, this time I didn't, but... There, there are small variations, but because the read is there, it becomes a liability. It may or may not um, activate. You know, it may not... Uh, it may vibrate the sound out. So, okay. Yeah, but, you know... Okay. Normally, if you need wind sounds, uh, yeah, uh, I, I had this composer who composed something and it was like um, to mimic the wind. So, what we did was we just took the mouthpiece out and blow, blow, blowing through the instrument is a lot safer than blowing with the reed on. I feel that it's louder without. If, when you want air sounds, it's louder just like that versus mm. the full instrument. Do you think so? Yeah, because because with a full instrument, back to the read, I'm very careful. Oh, I, I see. Will, you know, let's say if, if I try to mimic that kind of sound, right? Uh, I see, I, I see. Will. So basically, you remove the mouthpiece to... Okay. For a, a lot a stronger effect. I see. So um, if you want to create wind sounds, you can do two things. One is to really follow the keywords first. And one is to, of course, you know, in, control the volume of air. So... To start soft and then go loud, and you can combine both. Wow! So when you when you you know when you release the air, there are more 
more holes are open, and when more holes are open, the sound is more, it's a lot more brighter. Yeah, I, I, I don't see any advantage blowing just the mouthpiece, um, just the mouthpiece. Um, uh, the reason why composers would say blow through with the mouthpiece is because in one bar time you have to play something. Yeah. So okay. in that sense, you know, you have no choice unless you have another a tube yeah. next to you or something. Okay. Yeah, these keys over here, they are not so effective with clicking unless you smell, slam them real hard and okay. then, you know, your repairman will like, what did you do? Okay. But this, you know, this is a lot louder okay. with minimal effort. So if you need to write key clicks for... The bottom ones? The... There are these four keys over here. Okay. This uh, is better for effects, if you want key clicks effects. Okay. Um, and they have they produce different pitches as well. Kind of it co kind of coincides with the notes that, that it's originally at. But uh, one thing to know about key clicks is that and I, I mean I see composers write key clicks, but how? Because when I press my key down for a click, let's not forget there's a you know, I get a second sound. Do they yeah. want that? So, uh, one thing I look forward to is composers being more specific about this. Like, you know, key click. And then, is the release part of the sound that you want or should we like, like re release it really softly? But if you release it really softly, then we, we can't do it fast, you know, so... And if you do it fast, it'll sound like... It'll sound like... Yeah. See, I, I have a lot of extra sounds, but I just want ta 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 But I hear... Ta 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 like how can uh, just just write write which key you want us to press okay then we'll press that key uh but if we think it's not effective sometimes the ensemble will discuss if the composer's there we'll discuss with the composer maybe and then we'll give better suggestions like oh this key actually sounds a lot louder you know especially if you're playing in a concert hall and there are other instruments playing they can't hear this uh this click for example so maybe you want a, this click okay so yeah, so it depends on the situation. Of course, if you want like you know like small quiet raindrops, it's like that kind of thing. But it, it's more like if you cover up, it's more resonant if you cover up most of the tube, right? And maybe you slap the some note in the middle. That means like oh, like this. Yeah, thing. yeah. Or even your left hand mid uh middle. Yeah, like the sound, the, the tube is longer, you see? The mm, so the reson it resonates louder, I guess, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I get what you mean. I oh, never thought of that. But then, yeah. but then you see, it's not a key click already. It's it's more of a hit, hitting hitting a percussive wood effect. Yeah. Key clicks is always, key clicks is key clicks because of the, the metal, the association with the metal 